this this video blew my fucking mind. I think often, uh, I think often of the random stabbing victim who says she comes online and sees true crime obsessed women basically bragging about intentionally living with a type of fear she's in therapy to overcome. Oh, here it is. It's Emma Burquist. I see women proclaiming that this is necessary, that this is the way you need to move through the world as a woman. I see women choosing to live the way I'm fighting to overcome. Now, people will get mad at this and be like, why is she saying it like that? Like women are, are, are genuinely under threat. And there is truth to that when you're, for example, walking alone in a fucking parking lot in the dark. Okay, that's perfectly valid. Except when you watch this video, you will recognize that it goes far beyond that. When a lot of people live in profoundly unstable, okay, unsustainable ways. Like... Ways in which victims of real violence have, have tried to overcome with therapy. And I think it's literally a an ad, I assume. Like, I, I feel like this is an ad for this, like, weird lock mechanism or something right are socialists supposed to have ads on their twitch no um socialism is when uh no commerce no money uh and and work for free and also don't get a contract where you run ads yeah, no jobs. Socialism is when no job, no jokes, no fun. Dude, this is crazy. <laughs> Girlie should just get a gun at this point. I'm sorry. If Gurley gets a gun and she's this paranoid, she is going to kill her dog and her uh, husband or boyfriend, okay? One hundo P. <laughs> Someone said, this is me if lockpicking lawyer was evil. Yeah, she's going to kill the Amazon delivery man, okay? I like that she closed all the windows with the shittiest window closing. Like, it's so funny to just basically, it's such a clear, it's such a clear representation that this is an advertisement for this like portable door lock thing. Okay. Because like you did all that for your portable door lock, which I'm sure the lock picking lawyer would do a short work with. And then like all you do for those windows is basically just this. You think that's going to save you? Like, if someone is trying to break into your house, okay, if you are this fearful that someone's going to break into your house, you're cooked. <coughs> you're cooked. Those windows are the easiest target. It's also weirdly a fire hazard. You have no exit point. Let's say you are sleeping and... God forbid a fire breaks out. You are not making it out. You're not making it out of that house. You are cooked, okay? Literally and figuratively, you are cooked. And it is most likely, infinitely, uh, uh, it's, it's infinitely more likely that you will die in a fire than die with a Nicaraguan death squad knocking down your door to... I don't know. Get your Blu-ray DVDs for the notebook or something. Like, what do you have? What do you have at your house? People don't simply break into random people's homes to do violence. Okay? This is the point that I always try to stress to motherfuckers, okay? People do not randomly behave in ways that are irrational. Like, it can happen, right? There's always, like antisocial personality disorder, serial killers, whatever, you know what I mean? But beyond that, 
beyond that, in most, like the most likely scenario is that you have something in your house that they want, okay? Especially if you're talking about like someone breaking into your house, okay? Especially when you're talking about breaking into your house, uh, with like multiple people with guns and stuff. I think a big fear is a rapist breaking into attack. See, that's what I'm saying. Like you as a woman are significantly under statistically speaking, greater threat by being raped by a person that, you know, in a normal social environment, than you are of like someone breaking into your house and raping you like a random stranger. People don't know this, I don't think. Okay? Or even if you are uh, likely to be attacked or robbed or something like that, that is, again, infinitely more likely to occur in public than it is in your home like this. This does not mean, most women know that, just maybe not in this chat. No, this does not mean that, like, you know, there aren't uh, uh, serial killer rapists or whatever, but there there are, but, like, it's, it's very, very unlikely that they're out there uh, looking to kill you in your Midwestern suburban home. And not only that, but also, but also, this mechanism is not going to stop people any more than just locking your door would. Because most of it is just security theater. Security theater works. Okay? Having cameras outside of your apartment or home is, in most circumstances, just as large a deterrence as having fake cameras out there doesn't matter if it's real cameras or even a sign that says you have cameras out there. Okay? This is, weirdly enough, <clears throat> an extension of, like, QAnon-style fears that people have in our increasingly more alienated, increasingly more isolated increasingly more alienated and increasingly more isolated than one another. Like it is no different than um you know thinking that like children are getting kidnapped every single day. And then hearing about a number on a Facebook meme and you go 800,000 children got kidnapped last year. And you're like, what the hell is going on? And then you don't even investigate the number at all to find out that like the overwhelming majority of kidnappings are not like kidnappings in the white van sense, but it's just family members having a dispute over uh, who gets to have the child after like a divorce, which is still traumatic Many others are also specifically a, a child gone missing that is found immediately. It's like custody disputes. It's, again, people you know. Yes, 80% of those child kidnapping statistics that people post online are actually child custody disputes. The rest, the overwhelming majority of the rest, uh, is is uh, simply a child gone missing that is usually found after 48 hours, okay? Runaways or people that just, like, go missing. And then um, the, the incredibly, incredibly unlikely scenario where a random stranger kidnaps your child in broad daylight happens, like, I think it's, like, 80 times a year or something. Stranger abductions are profoundly, profoundly rare. Incredibly rare. It's not even 80. I think it's like eight. Yeah.
Like, what do you mean? What are you gonna do? Uh, the blow the the flute when the when the rapist death squad comes knocking down your door, and they're like, "Shit, we can't get in through the front because she has the TikTok affiliate link backed fingerprint sensor." So I guess they just break the window and literally put their hand up like this and flip the window. Uh, after they break the window, she doesn't even have like the the uh uh glass breaking alerts that automatically uh inform uh, uh the the uh, closest like cop or anything because you that's a real thing that uh, houses have is like if you break the window, there's like a window shatter alarm. But she doesn't even have that, okay? So, let's say they broke the window, they opened the fucking window still, and they walked in through there. What are you going to do? Are you going to blow the flute at them? And then this, like, what? The, the goal is with the, what? I keep all this under my pillow. My sleep is very sensitive. I hope my husband will come back soon, and I can relax. I keep all of this under my pillow. My wife was attacked by a stranger while hiking this summer in Eastern Washington, and she saw this TikTok and was dumbfounded by how stupid this video is. Yeah, there's a lot of this kind of stuff out there, dude. It's... Oh! Oh, 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 oh! Is this the same lady? Oh, she does this as well. She does this here, too. She does this for hotels, and she does this for cruises, too. I've seen this. Okay, I gotta pee while playing this. Hold on. This is like, you need, you need therapy. Check uh, mattresses with bed bugs. I mean, that's not to be a doomer, but isn't it far more likely that someone will hack the cameras and have video of her sleeping in her bedroom? I mean, if there's a will, there's a way, guys. That's my point, okay? That's all I'm saying. There are so many corporations of political interest in this country that actively pay for news and ads to keep you scared. It's so fucking gross. Yes, 100%. I think that over the course of the past two years now, the crime spree phenomena that you saw all over news media that legitimately caused people uh, to, to, including my own uncle, who was supposed to be a professional media analyzer, okay? He is a professional media guy, and his brain is fucking broken by the false narratives of crime running rampant including thinking that gavin newsom like uh gavin newsom released <coughs> oh god you guys are so cringe dude okay here take a week off got it you poop sock me oh my god lol really funny many many twitch chatters don't realize that if you keep rewarding people with the gotham and the omega laws this is all it's going to be all of the links are gonna be poop sock and it's just going to be me getting poop socked over and over again for three fucking hours, dude. It's just low effort. Oh, God. 
you just don't know what is good for you, okay? You don't know that you need to subscribe at the top of the hour, for example. You don't know that, but you do because at the top of the hour, there's a three-minute break. If you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime. You don't know that, though. Yeah, it's going to stop being funny soon. I promise you. You're not going to like it when it's no longer funny and people are still doing it. Here's the three-minute break now. this isn't that bad but if done for affiliates it's obviously weird no you're only saying that because i think you personally agree with like the level of freak out that this person is engaging in yo dude i'm serious <sighs> remember a while back someone said hey hassan as a person who gets like many credible death threats like how do you deal with it i work in a i think he said like i work in a psych ward and i get a lot of potential death threats from a lot of the, the, the people that I, I work with and it gets to me a little bit. And I, my, my answer was literally, I don't think about it. You want to know why I don't think about it? Because if I thought about it, I would go fucking crazy. And that is no way to live. My mentality always has been that I simply, okay. I simply must not think about it. I simply must not let it consume me okay because if i do all the time it will make me a paranoid psychotic person okay now of course the difference is that that chatter was a psychiatrist yes oh wait i think the chatter was a psychologist and their patients were dealing with death threats no i think no 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 no, no. the chatter was a psychiatrist and the patients were delivering uh the doctor death threats or someone in the like I think they said something along the lines of like, um, they, they, uh, said something along the lines of just like, you know, like they, they're getting, they're, they're getting death threats, but like, you know, active death threats from people that are in their physical vicinity. So it's like a little bit different. Yeah. Yeah. So my point is the details are not important in this context. Yeah. Here's the thing, dude. Okay. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Um, you have to literally, you, you have to compartmentalize. Uh, I'm not that chatter, but I'm a psych nurse. I do get death threats all the time. Exactly. You have to compartmentalize. You have to recognize that like, if it happens, it happens. Okay. But you just must not think about it because if you think about it all the time, you're also ruining all the moments where it hasn't happened yet. Okay. That's it. I, that's my approach. I don't know if it's healthy or not, but I do legitimately believe that that's the best way to go about it. Okay. I obviously factor statistics into this as well. Like the likelihood of someone, uh, you know, coming in and actually killing you, especially if you're not like a person with psychopathic, incredibly uh incredibly mentally ill stalkers i am one of those people okay i'm one of those people as you guys know but if i if i were to think about all of the people all of the people that are constantly like oh, i'm gonna come to your house and kill you right if i had to think about every single uh, actionable death threat i would go crazy Okay. 
The thing is, most normies don't have that level of psychopathic uh, stalkers. I mean, some women certainly do. Okay. Some women certainly do have that, especially online. <sighs> the difference is like, even if you do have that, you have to get it out of your mind. If someone actually comes and tries, that would not destroy your mental health. I'm not going to talk about this any further. I don't want to reveal my own personal uh, shit. Okay? But all I'm saying is, there's more to it than you think you know. And even then, this attitude that I have is consistent. I just don't talk about a lot of stuff. Okay? But I do think that... Um, but I do think that, and, and talking about this shit is not good, but I do think that not thinking about it, at least for my own, for my own personal, uh, experience has been healthier. Okay. Have you ever seen this guy's divorce dad starter pack? All right, we're back again. Well, I'll do this in a second. Um, oh, the cruise safety one was the famous one. You were too big to kidnap, man. I think you're okay. Brother, um, kidnapping is not the only way that someone can harm you. Okay, here, this is the crazy one. Okay, this is the actual nutty one. Low-key, though, this is the only circumstance where this is kind of valid. Okay? Let me explain something to you. Cruises, as we've talked about already, are basically one giant death trap, okay? It's like... When you get on a cruise, you're basically volunteering to be in someone else's murder mystery. Whether you are aware of it or not doesn't change that reality. So my goal is basically to just, you know, tell you, don't go on a cruise. Don't do it. That's the safest thing you can do. Okay. But out of all of the circumstances where she's like legitimately terrified and like, you know, taking all these precautions and shit. Okay, this is the one that's like at least closest to being valid. And yeah, no cruises, no helicopters, okay? You cruise, you lose. That's right. That's all I'm stating. No Cessnas either. No, no, only commercial airliners. Don't do not get on private jets. Do not get on you're ridiculously paranoid. You think I'm ridiculously paranoid? I just explained to you how the greatest way to overcome death threats. Does not give does that not give me a little bit credibility against like the paranoia accusations? Dude, I think lockpicking lawyer should make videos just like breaking through all of this. Like set it up in a way, set it up in a way that is like identical to her video. And then like do TikTok reacts to it where he's like, here's how I would very easily break in. I feel like it's kind of fucked up, but also low key, you know, valid. Once again, just fire hazard after fire hazard after fire hazard. And also, not only that, not only that, but also beyond that, and you're going to be shocked to find this out, I think, 
She's very consistent. Her other exit or her other point of entry is just so unimaginably insecure. Watch. Look around from the balcony and make sure you don't see anything strange. That, that's right. No extra protocols there, baby. Just a sliding door, baby. There it is. It's like, it, it's just like, okay, well, then why did you do all of that for the main door? Like if anything that is <laughs> the only thing that's stopping you from a relatively common entry point is, is just a curtain. What the hell? It's just a curtain. People aren't going to grapple through on the balcony. What do you mean? You literally just simply trapped yourself into your room if somebody comes through the balcony, you definitely could go through the balcony, by the way. That definitely does happen. Who's going to be rappelling down the side of the ship? This is an Ocean Eleven. No, you don't have to rappel down the side of the ship to get to the balcony. Have you guys never been, not only on a ship, but just in general, in a hotel or something? What are you talking about? No, just the balcony next door. Or the balcony above. I don't know if you know this, but there are balconies on both sides, above and below. Like, if you are that scared... If you are that scared, as a contractor, I wonder how many glass pane replacements they have on board to replace broken balcony doors. You don't really need to. If you. What is this? Yeah. Yeah. Look at this, dude. I mean, I don't know what her balcony looks like. Right. But like <laughs> it happens. Okay. There you go. It's not that crazy. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the idea that like nobody could actually go into the room, break into the room through a very common point of entry is kind of silly. It's a silly take, especially if you think that the doorway is, is supposed to be this impenetrable fortress because like people are coming after you. Here's another good one from her. No, no, no. This is what we watched. Uh, this is how we started the conversation. <clears throat> That's why you got to peer out of the balcony for anything strange. Okay, fine. I forgot. She looked to see if there's something strange. Yeah. The thing is, anyone can use the front door, but only like four people can enter through the balcony. No. How is the balcony a common entry point? Do you think this guy is like a profoundly athletic individual? Or do you think he's some random dumbass frat bro who drank too much? What do you think was happening here? No. Like I said, if you need that level of security because you have something that worthwhile and you have enemies that are skillful enough to, you know want to intercept, want to break into your room, okay? Then she failed the OPSEC. She failed the OPSEC. There is no, like, this is a penetrable fortress. This is now all of a sudden just a fire hazard on one side. That's it. She should have rented all adjacent rooms. Fair.
if you really want to do that, you have to literally clear out probably the entire hall, okay, and put security members in each of the rooms next door. Make sure that the entire floor is gone. You have the entire floor. You have to get like half of the deck cleared out because somebody could just easily traverse multiple doors down. Somebody could easily break through the panels, okay? And then above and beneath you, you still have to absolutely. Yeah, Tyler one running out an entire hall when he went to Korea was far more secure than this. Wait, what? He did that? Why did he do that? Oh, he did that because he's too loud. That's funny. Oh, I thought that he was like, they were like trying to kill him because he's, they're like, you're not Korean, but you're so good at league or something. Like, I don't know why. I don't know why in my mind, I imagined that like Korean people were like mad at him for being good at league or something. Or maybe it was like Michaela shit talking K-pop stands or something. I did not think about it being from the perspective of like him being too loud at all. Baker put a bounty on T1. They were like, Tyler one, your bitch too bad. Okay. Your lifts too heavy. Your weed too good. Be careful. Tyler one. They'll kill you. Okay. They'll kill you. T1. They're, <laughs> Don't go, don't go to Korea, Tyler One. They'll kill you. <laughs> uh, my point was more that he was unintentionally more secure than this TikTok lady. Yeah. I mean, we're talking about crazy OPSEC stuff. Not, oh, I'm loud, but I don't want to bother people. Lamont. I know. I know. He's easy to kidnap. Need to take precautions. First of all, first of all, Tyler one is not easy to kidnap at all. He's six foot five. I just want to point that out. He is six foot five. As someone who's six foot four, he is six foot five. Okay. And he's also one of the most brolic individuals I have met on the Twitch side of things. So, Anybody that, and he has a, a weirdly shaped head that he uses like uh, that, that one piece pirate to like break through, uh, break into his own um, treasure. But then he got punched real hard by, Ad, was it Garp? He got punched real hard by Admiral Garp. Don Chin Jiao, yeah. And then he lost his, <laughs> it used to be a, a cone. Yeah. He's five foot six. That's two measurements. No, he is six foot five. Tyler one is six foot five. Stop spreading misinformation. He is six foot five. Anyway. True, he's taller than you. I'm I'm standing right now. I'm literally standing. Look at that, bro. I'm standing and he's taller than That's me. Hey, you just saw this guy. He I'm met me I'm, I'm first time ever. He was like, "Whoa, are you big Tonka T?" I said, "Yes, I am. Nice to meet you, bud." Wait, hold on. Let me get on my tippy toes real quick. <laughs> Tyler is the tallest six foot seven I've ever seen. What girls think six foot and five eleven looks like? Bad camera angle, Tyler is way taller. Damn. Simpler times, dude. 2021, simpler times when not every fucking weirdo, when I didn't have the same level of, of uh, haters that I used to have. So every comment section wasn't like, if that video was posted now, it would literally be like, oh, this guy fucking sucks. Why is Tyler one hanging out with a guy? He sucks so bad. I hate him. Here's like 17 different essays that I wrote about him. Oh, God. All right, what is this? And with another pack of divorced dads, let's see what we get here. Okay, surround sound. Fishing pole. 
Healing Potion, interesting. Okay, Healing Potion, this is not a good card. But once you get used to using it, you can't stop using it. So it's you'll definitely have it in your deck at some point. Uh, Hot Plate, eh. The Ring of Darkness, mm -hmm. interesting. Okay, so the original version of this card was just called Wedding Ring. Um, but they've since uh, changed it. I guess it's taken on a different meaning. Uh, weather Spell, pretty common. Hmm. Uh, smoked Meat, not bad, actually. All right, last card. Come on, just give me the house. Come on, house! What the heck? He did it. He got it. This guy's a good version of Matt Walsh. Hassan, this guy also made a good clip on Manifestation. I owe the banks a lot of money, but little do they know, I just learned about Manifestation. Now I'm gonna get so much money, I don't need a job. Why? Because I can manifest. I don't need the old gods anymore. I answer to no one. Everything is mine, thanks to Manifestation. Yeah, I mean, this has 66 views, but if he was like a young, hot, 20-year-old TikToker and he was saying that, he would have like 7 million views. And people would unironically write underneath the comments like, oh, I did this and it worked for me too. It's like... Potential offensive... Con Let's see. Let's look at my TikTok for you page on desktop. It just sucks so bad. Ooh, this guy's talking about the financial collapse of 2024. Get that out of your head. My followers have been tagging me like crazy in this guy's video because he's talking about the popping of the everything bubble. Let me just dissect this piece by piece. First, the guy talks about the derivatives market and how its total value is $715 trillion, which is much more than the total GDP of the entire Greetings world. Inside. He gave a good definition on what a derivative is, and then he just failed completely after that point. Yeah, I keep thinking that my gameplay is fake in Valorant. Look, I just altered because I flicked my controller, but look, I shoot with this. Very simple, chat. Very simple. I aim with this arm. I move around with this stick, chat. If I want to jump, I press this B button over here, crouch. You know what I'm saying? I could use my alt other abilities. I flick this one up to use my drone. Look around with this. It's pretty self-explanatory. I don't know why y'all be thinking it's fake, bro. Just understand I'm better than you, bro. And I understand that it could be... There's no way that this is real. No, because Valorant itself would not allow this. Valorant itself would not allow this. He would get banned, first of all, like immediately, because you're a denier. No, dude, it's just like, bro, there's like kernel level access in your computer. How the hell does he bypass? There are people who by bypass and ride doesn't care usually. How is that possible? People beat Dark Souls games with a dance bat. No, I'm saying Riot is so aggro about like any sort of other application that if you have a razor in your computer, it bricks when you try to play Valorant. So I guess my point is, how are you? How are you? Able to play with Joy Cons with, I suspect, like some kind of modified uh, application that allows Joy Cons uh, to, to trick the computer into thinking that you're using a mouse and keyboard or something, okay? And you remapped it perfectly. But like people don't have, people are not allowed to have like Razor running in their computer without, uh, you know, <laughs> riot breaking. <laughs> No mod is a controller input mapper. The app doesn't have to run on his computer as long as the Joy-Con inputs are sent via USB. The game cannot know. Who tricked you into thinking Riot's anti-cheat is crazy good? I tricked myself into thinking Riot's anti-cheat is crazy good because I know Riot's anti-cheating is crazy good. Now, out of all of the other comparable... Out of all the other comparable uh, uh, competitive shooters out there, it absolutely is insanely good.
Riot anti-cheat is so good. I mean, that doesn't mean that there aren't cheaters that somehow find their way into Riot games. But Riot anti-cheat is so good. I've even encountered cheaters in my games before and immediately they clap them. And then you get that red screen where it's like, we found a cheater in your game. All of the points will be restored. And it's, it's crazy. Man, I literally use Razer Synapse and Cortex playing Valorant. What do you mean it breaks? Um, on some computers, it does. There's like audio software that, it, that even uh, sometimes breaks with Valorant. Riot Anti-Cheat is just annoying. There's plenty of well-known ways to bypass it. Oh my God. Every time, every time I talk about like something that is tangentially related to modding or hacking, there's a bunch of people... There's a bunch of people that automatically go, dude, you don't understand. That's some script kitty shit. Okay. Me, on the other hand, I'm an expert level hacker. I, dude, I hack Riot every day. Sure, man. Got it. <coughs> okay. I believe you. <laughs> no, the anti-cheat is bad. I always get cheaters on the other team. It's why I always lose at Valo. Yeah, that's like me saying every single person that I play Valorant with is a stream sniper. Except in my situation, they really are. Why would Riot stop Razor Mice from being used? No, they don't have a problem with Razor Mice. It's just like, ugh, that, was a t that was a point about like how aggressive Riot's uh, anti-cheat software is. That like there's literally software that you can normally run with every other program that for some weird reason bricks with, um, with Riot's anti-cheat. That's it. Because it, like, thinks you're using, like, a modded mouse or some shit. So it's, like, shocking to me that you can mod a Joy-Con to make it seem like you're using a... What's well, You know nothing about modding or hacking? Why are you getting so mad and defensive? What? I'm not... Do I seem mad at all? What is happening? Are you okay? Huh. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Yes. Bro is on the nothing. You're a boomer when it comes to tech. Sure, dude. I'm very mad. You guys got me. The Hub recently revealed the most searched video game characters on their site for 2023. So let's review the top 10 together. In 10th place, we have Mercy from Overwatch, which makes sense. 9, Widowmaker. Sure, I get it. 8, Mario. Mario above Widowmaker and Mercy. That's right. crazy. 7, Ada Wong. 6. Who is jerking off to Mario? That's wild, dude. What is happening? No, no way. Is it like a fascination or something? Like, what's happening there? What, why would somebody do that? That makes no damn sense. That, one hundo P, makes no dang sense. Mpreg? Mpreg Mario? Yeah, I don't understand that at all. Straight up. Sonic. Five, Lady Dimitrescu. Don't come for me. I looked up the actual Romanian pronunciation. Capcom got it wrong. I'm probably also saying it wrong, but you do pronounce the ending. Four, Lara Croft, but I kind of wish they specified which version of Lara. I feel like, and I'm probably generalizing within my own bubble, but men like the older style better, and then people like me love the new. Oh god, not in that way. Three, Diva. Uh, apparently D.Va was originally going to be 16 years old, but they changed that before adding her to the game to avoid having to re-review the age rating if they wanted to start, you know, murdering children. <laughs> it's probably a good thing that they changed it. Two, Tifa, yeah, and in the top spot, Chun-Li. But Chun-Li for- That makes sense. Um, also, I'm glad that that age rating stops weirdos from, uh, like, I wish the age rating existed for anime too, so that we wouldn't have so many- freaking anime uh or manga with people that are like here's this here's the like thickest character you've ever seen oh also they're 17 years old 
please understand, they are 17 years old. Okay, I would stress this over and over again. They are 17. Do not misunderstand me. I am not mixing my words. This is a 17-year-old, okay? I want to stress that. It's just, like, so strange. It's so insanely weird to just constantly be like, no, 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 trust me. This character, 17... From Fortnite. I really hope that they just made a mistake and it's not people looking specifically for Fortnite Chun Li. I also want to give a very special mention to Slime from Genshin Impact in 14th place and Gardevoir in 27th. What the fuck? What makes a woman attractive? I like a woman with a good sense of humor. I also like a woman who has stilts surgically attached to her legs so she can try playing in the NBA. Huge stilts. I mean, she's like 12 feet off the ground. She has a contract with the NBA team, like a 10-day contract. They're looking for an effort player. She's going like four, seven, and two, but she's getting boards. They need the <laughs> boards. I took out a fourth credit card to pay for an experimental surgery where they take skin from my lower back, graft it onto my legs to attach stilts, and now I'm being paid the veteran's minimum to provide <laughs> leadership to a young team with a lot of draft picks. I wouldn't mind it. If she had stilts attached and was like trying to overtake Wembenyama as the number one pick. A girl who thought <laughs> this is so funny. Yeah. This is, I mean, it's valid. I don't know. It's shocking to me. I guess it's shocking to me that, that. It's shocking to me that, like, um, all of these guys uh, said it, and he found so many people with the common uh, perspective. It's a, it's a good perspective to have, though, for sure. I thought it would be a good idea to get stilts sewn onto her legs. So she's in the G League now, waiting to get called up by the Indiana Pacers. The surgery went horribly wrong because no doctor has ever done that before. So she had to get it done by a vet, and it got infected, and she might never walk again. But that's how we met. I'm the vet. What's your go-to first date spot? I like to take a girl for a drink, or maybe to that secret tunnel those old people are digging to escape the assisted living facility. That hidden tunnel that those old people are digging to escape their abusive orderlies. I like how the elderly people are using their canes as shovels and their oxygen machines to pump air into the tunnels so they can dig for longer. Maybe asking yourself where'd they hide the dirt? Oh, so they put it in boxes and shipped it to their grandkids disguised as care packages. A guy used to take me to this tunnel, but then the nurses found it and they gave Eleanor the lead digger three days in the hole. I like how Eugene was worried about cave-ins and then It's cold mm. as fuck out here. Here's all my stuff. I'm a little worried about the weather, but fuck it. My plan as usual is to never pay for accommodation. So I've got to figure out how to stay warm and what I'm doing for the next month and a half. You can't see in the video how cold it is, but my hands are turning red from- This is Vagrant Holiday, isn't it? Just walking around. Anyway, I just hid my sleeping gear under a fallen tree and covered it with leaves. Not sure if what I have will even be warm enough though. And I haven't eaten anything today because it's a fucking holiday and everything's closed. But in better news, this is probably the best place to be if World War III breaks out because third time's the charm. Fuck sleeping in the cold, I got a better idea. All right, let's see what I can find in here. No way. All right, I can make it work. No way. Nice. I'll take some sheets. No, these videos are old as hell. I've never seen them though. I've never actually watched a Vagrant. I've never actually watched a Vagrant Holiday video before, but that is nutty that this is like how the vibes are. Like, he just does that. He's just like, that's, I mean, that's crazy. Didn't this guy quit YouTube, okay, so really? My bed. I got one sheet down here because the floor is dirty and it's going to keep me clean. And I got three sheets here that are going to use this blanket, so it's going to keep me warm. I'm going to have to sleep like I'm a goddamn Tetris. <laughs>